Um, that was Black Street, no diggity. So George Zimmerman, who was a neighborhood watch commander, uh, sees someone suspicious in his neighborhood that would turn out later to be a 17 year old, 16 year old boy, Trayvon Martin. Uh, he, uh, called into the police department. The dispatcher told him to not pursue, to stay away. Of course, George Zimmerman does. A fight ensues. Trayvon Martin is dead. Um, uh, Ahmaud Arbery is pursued by the McMichael father and son, uh, along with w William Roddy Bryan. Uh, he is pursued in, in a truck, chased, uh, you know, uh, a little over a quarter of a mile, um, and shot dead um, under the auspice of some, uh, there were robberies in the neighborhood. Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, a uh, 17-year-old boy who should have had access to a gun, um, but he leaves Illinois. Uh, goes to Wisconsin, and under the auspices of stop preventing burglaries or rendering aid, he murders uh, three, two men and shoots three men and murders two. The thing that they all have in common, whether they are from different states, uh, whether they're from different cities and municipalities, the thing they have in common is that the uh, three the white guys, or four white guys, or excuse me, five white guys, who went out, started shit, and murdered somebody and argued self-defense. They also had some other things in common. Um, they also got predominantly white juries. Um, Zimmerman had, I believe, one uh, person of, of, of uh, one color, person of color. Uh, I think um, uh, George Zimmerman, excuse me, I, I think the McMichaels and the uh, Bryant trial, the murderers of uh, Ahmaud Arbery, they have one person of color. And w w Rittenhouse has one person of color. So you go out. You start the contact, you initiate the contact, you chase people, you run them down, and then you claim that you were afraid from your life, for your life. And that's pretty consistent. It's pretty consistent. It is, it's interesting that the very law that the McMichaels, along with Roddy Bryant, are quoting, uh, the, the law that they acted under was a citizen's, uh, right, it's a citizen patrol. Like in 1861, uh, Georgia was the first one to uh, weaponized citizens who made it okay to make citizens arrest. And that became a law in Georgia in 1861. Um, and it was repealed. It was, it was taken off the books in May of uh, 2021. So for all this time, this idea, this law existed and there were similar laws that were passed in succession. There were other people, other states that exacted the same thing that Georgia did. So in 1850, uh, 1861, Georgia started and then a slew of other states followed. But you know what happened in 1857? The Dred Scott decision was made and that held, the Supreme Court held that the Constitution did not protect people of African descent, no, whether, no matter what, whether they are free or not that they were not American citizens. And how many times does that play out in almost everything we do? How many times uh, with the election of Donald Trump, uh, 70 something, almost 70% of white people voted for him, people of color did not. They feel as if the election was stolen because they feel actually that you're not a person that should be voting because you're not a true American citizen. So they don't have any problem taking your rights away. They don't have any problem acting in ways that they did right, right when the Civil War was over. The Civil War is over in 18, right at 1861. Uh, Georgia enacts a law that what makes uh, citizen patrol, citizen militias, they can weaponize them, walk up to black people, ask them what they're doing. How much does that continue today? And then they pick juries that are of the same mindset. So they murder, they initiate the contact, they murder people, they, they have juries that are uh, sympathetic with their mindset, and then they're free because I truly believe that they honestly believe that anything you do to black people is OK. And I believe that it, it goes back to our initial contact here. There were laws in place. And in, in Georgia specifically, there was that law in place that existed until 2021. And they functioned function under that law. There's a reason that all these men in different parts of the country initiate contact murder unarmed people, and then say, I, I fear for my life. because, And then stack those juries with, with predominantly white people who feel the same way they do because they actually believe that they're entitled to do that. They actually be, George Zimmerman believed it was his responsibility to see what this guy was doing here. Initiate the contact, a murder ensued. 
the, the McMichaels and, and Roddy Bryan believed it was their God-given right to initiate this contact and find out what this black guy was doing. Uh, there had been a slate of robberies in the neighborhood. Uh, and, and even though he had on short running shorts and, 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 and a shirt, I don't know what he could carry in that. I don't know how small uh, big screen TVs are. They initiate contact and murder him. Then they say they fear for their life. Kyle Rittenhouse left a state, uh, left Illinois to a state he did not even live in with a gun. And, and says he feared for a life. And they stack those juries with people who have the same mindset. And I truly believe that they believe that we are not protected under the Constitution because we shouldn't have ever been American citizens anyway. And they act that way over and over again, whether it's voting, whether it's the thing that the neighborhoods we live in, whether it's the laws that are put in place, all are designed to do one thing, to let us know that we don't belong here. They do the same thing. Where in, where in any reasonable person's mind can you start shit, murder someone, and claim that you feared for your life? I'll tell you, Warren, in America, in America, and you can do it over and over and over again. Our history is rot with it. It is enshrined in law. It was in, so the Dred Scott happens in 1957. Uh, uh, Georgia enacts this law in 1861. That law and that mindset, that law stays on the books until 2021. But that mindset has never left America and it permeates every aspect of our society. You can see it in the way we vote, the way we're legislated against, and the way we're murdered. That's a little note from the GED section. We've got the Jazz Report coming up in 15 minutes. It's the D.L. Hughley Show.